everybody. Come on, let's stand up. Good morning and praise the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Deacon Mark Norman from Winning Souls Evangelistic Church. And I'm just here to tell you, this is a church on fire. This is a church where the love of God is present. You need to come down and check us out here at 2322 Mountain Road, Winning Souls Evangelistic Church, where the pastor is a Pastor Ian Edwards, who brings a powerful word every Sunday right here. And First Lady Nicola Edwards also. This is a great place to be. If you, if you need some place to go uh, and you don't have a church home, come on down. And see what I'm saying. This is the church that, that you want to be a part of. It's just a great place to be. We're on fire for the Lord, and you can feel it in the atmosphere. You're welcome. At Winning Souls. You're welcome. At Winning 22, Mountain Road. Once again, that's Winning Souls Evangelistic Church. Come on, y'all, stand on your feet and give God some praise. Give God some praise for your solid rock. Give God some praise because he is your solid rock. Is he your firm foundation? Is he your firm foundation? Is he your salvation? Come on, praise him, my solid rock. My solid rock, you are.
Jesus, lead me to the rock. Come on. Lead me to the rock. Higher than I. Come on, praise him. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, praise team. Go ahead and grab the hand of the person beside you. You can continue, musicians. Just grab the hand of the person beside you. Father God, we bless you in this place. God, we thank you for being who you are. We thank you for being our solid rock. With so many disappointments and inconsistencies, Father, you're our solid rock. You're our firm foundation. You're that one constant in our lives, God. You're the ground in which we stand, Father. You're the one that we can lean on, God. God, you are our refuge. You are our provision, Father. You're everything that we need, the solid rock, God. God, we bless your name on this day. We thank you for these people. People have come in with different mindsets, different things going on in their lives. Some are seeking, some are looking for understanding, God. And God, we need you to continue, not start, but continue to reveal yourself in this place on today, in the minds and in the hearts of the people that are here, Father. Make those that don't know you, know you. Make those that already know you, understand you better, Father. Make this atmosphere conducive for learning for refreshing, for deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, anything in this place, Father, that would abort your plans and your purpose, Father, we crush it right now in the name of Jesus. We remove it. We send it out right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Pray for the hearers in this place. But we're not going to be just hearers, but doers of the word, God. God, we thank you for the liberty and the freedom that we have that only comes by you and through you, God. And now, God, as I stand to proclaim your word, Father, give me all that I need. Move in my body, God. Move in my mind. Move in my speech, Father. And make it clear, Father, in the name of Jesus. Make it simple but yet powerful in the name of Jesus, Father God. God, I pray that if there's a person here that's not saved by the time I'm done, they're going to say, what must I do to be saved, God? So now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, he is my strength. And I know that he's your strength. And he is my redeemer. And I know him to be your redeemer. Let the people in this place give God some praise and say amen, amen, and amen. Why are you still standing, 2 Corinthians? Thank you all for praying for me while I was gone. I don't like to fly, and God always brings me back safe. Amen. Amen. Something's, uh, my stomach hasn't been feeling too good since the plane. It probably has something to do with the altitude, but the nauseousness is making me feel jittery. So pray for me as I uh, get through this message. I'm not scared, obviously, but the nauseousness is just making me feel, uh, feel uneasy. But we're going to get through this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 through 17. And I just want to praise God for everyone in here this morning, those visitors that came to join us and be with us, and even members. You know, I don't take what you all do, it's volunteer service for the Lord lightly. 
because it's a press for a lot of us just to come in here and do what it is that we do. I know some of the concerns in the congregation and there's some that I don't know, but I honor you today and I praise God for you because you don't have to be here. You're not here because I force you to be here, because I rebuke you from the pulpit. But I think you're just here because you love God and you love serving. So I praise God for you and I honor you on today. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. If you have it in your Bible, say amen. For Christ's love compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, here it is. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And this morning, I want to preach from the title, I've Been Changed. I've Been Changed. You can take your seats. Y'all praying with me this morning? I have come to the conclusion that just as God was intentional in ensuring that he was visible in the earth through Jesus, that he still desires to make the invisible qualities of himself known and visible through Christians to a world that needs to see him, experience him, and accept him. I think the problem for the Christian in that regard is that we are those that stand on the platform of God's grace being shaped and formed by his spirit. But all of this is out in front of everybody else. What am I saying? We are on display while God is trying to get us together. The reality is that we are not saved and immediately taken to glory. We are not hidden in a group with other Christians waiting for the rapture. But instead, we are positioned right in the midst of people to be a demonstration of God's power, a defender of the gospel, and a disciple-making ambassador for Jesus Christ. Because of who we are and where we are, there is always scrutiny about our actions and our motives as kingdom citizens. For some of us, even with all the serving and sincerity for God, there will always be some that will question the angle that you're coming from. They will wonder what you're looking to gain from them. They're, they're trying to inspect for manipulative behaviors and other ungodly behaviors. And even as does it take all that to be a Christian? Why? Because they are looking for a reason to be able to weaken your witness, crush your character, and taint your testimony. Now, now the reason why we get this response is because we as believers are seen from a worldly view. We, we have dual citizenship both here and the kingdom simultaneously. And kingdom is unfamiliar in this age, even though Jesus says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what happens is that what is unfamiliar seems ingenuine, must have some motive or drive that seeks some form of worldly gain. And we live with the responsibility of telling and showing the world that it's not what it looks like. Now, I know it's easy for us to simply just say that, well, first of all, if they didn't like Jesus, they're not going to like me. That's easy to say. If they don't under didn't understand Jesus, then they don't want then they don't understand me. But it's not enough for us to just end with that resolve, because as believers, I believe that we should be concerned about how we appear before the world. I said, I believe that you may think it's just enough just to say they don't understand us. But I believe that as Christians, we are not only have a responsibility to defend the gospel, but we should be willing to defend our position and purpose as those who are living out the gospel. We don't just try to help others understand why the Bible says what it says, 
but we should have an answer for our motives and be able to articulate in a humble manner who we are and why we do what we do as those that are sons and daughters of God. Are y'all with me? And now to be honest, I think it's good practice for us to defend our motives, antics, and, and lifestyles because every time we do, watch this, it gives us the opportunity to ask ourselves, are we really living up to what we speak about? <laughs> Is there suspicion about our lifestyle or how we use our authority as Christians? Because the reality is that though we are saved, we still wrestle with rulers, principalities, and wickedness in high places. And sometimes in our doing for God and working in the kingdom and trying to use our gifts and teachings to persuade men and women to walk with God, what we wrestle with in the spirit in our own lives manifests itself in our flesh. And maybe what people are saying about us really is true. Ooh, I said a mouthful. I know we all would like to think that we give the best picture of our Christianity on a regular basis, but life has a way of squeezing out some stuff <laughs> that the Holy Spirit had suppressed for so long. And before you know it, you're full of a spirit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Because working for the kingdom is rough when you are still trying to work out your own sanctification before man. Because you are doing the will of God while every day suppressing the will of your flesh. And it's not that you don't like what the flesh has to offer, but you understand what makes God offended. And since you've been brought with a high price and understand whose you are, you make a decision that being in Christ is the best place you could ever be. And since no one can pluck you out the hand of God, then there's no reason to walk out the hand of God. It's in God that you see through a different lens. Love is the lens that brings your motives and pursuits into focus. And it's because of love that you are mindful how all that you do and say affirms your relationship with God and affects your ability to reconcile humanity back to God. And that's all Paul is trying to get the church at Corinth to understand is that while you all don't quite understand all that you see, he's defending his apostleship and question my motives. You need to understand that it's the love of Christ that compels us. You'll find that in verse 14. Paul tells him that this love that compels me to do anything and everything for your sake is a love that is inerrant in me. And that I've learned from the one that was willing to do anything and everything, not just for my sake, but for yours, too. He's talking to the Corinthian church because Christ died for all. You saw that in the text. And all those that live no longer live for themselves and unto themselves, but to the one who died for them and was raised again for their sake. Notice how Paul doesn't just break down and get out of shape at their lack of understanding of his assignment as an apostle. But instead, he breaks down the reality of what Christ did for all to include them so that they would understand it's not a church thing, but it's a Christ thing. It's not about how we react to other creatures, but how we respond to the creator in light of what Jesus did for all of us. And I believe that what Paul is doing here is letting them see that there's more to you than just man and what man portrays and what man thinks. But there's also the spiritual side of you in which I consider what God has done in me that causes me to do for you. I can't just judge you like I used to by human standards or wisdom, but I recognize that you too have another part to you that Christ is concerned about. I said he's talking to the church at Corinth. And if it's his concern now, it's my concern. If he died for all and I'm a living witness because I received it, then I've got to spend my life ensuring others live because his will is my will. His way is my way. And his work that he began on earth is my work to continue while I'm here on earth. Paul basically makes his argument that the reason I don't think the way I used to about you and about Christ and the reason you don't understand me is because I've been changed. But because he died for all, this change is just not available to me, but it's available to you too. Why? Because he died for all. When you consider the overall context that this fits in, 
and you can probably find that looking at verses 11 through 21, it speaks of the ministry of reconciliation. And I believe that Paul is not only interested in them knowing what Christ did, but showing what he did through his example, but sharing what Christ did so that others in this church could be reconciled. In fact, in verse 20, Paul explains that God is working through him for that very reason and begs this group of people to accept the favor of God on all of us and be reconciled. And the reason why God compelled me to preach this message, because part of the problem with how people are seeing God is the way they see us. They, they need to see the Christian life not as something offensive to them, but an opportunity for them to live the life that Christ died for. Yes, they are always inclined to judge us from a worldly perspective because they don't understand why we do what we do and respond to God the way we do. But we should live to where outside of that, their misunderstanding isn't due to the fact that we just continue to live like our old selves. We need to live a life that says, I've been changed. I'm no longer what I used to be, but I'm what God says I am. We've got to live a life that says, I have been changed. I got a good class this morning. Paul shares a few characteristics of the changed life that I want to lift up here. He says that this changed life, that it's in Christ, that's in the text. He said that one becomes a new creation. And then he goes on to say that the old has passed and the new has come or is here. First thing Paul says is that I've been changed. He says that we're in Christ. Paul uses one of his most important and most used sayings in the New Testament when he speaks of being in Christ. He says that we have been put in, planted in, fixed in securely, or been embedded deeply in Christ. Ooh, that's good. That's what, that's what he says. This literally means that if I'm in Christ, my source is in him. My thoughts are affected by him. My ways are directed by him. We have such a oneness that his desires are mine. His ways are mine. And the way that I see it is the same way that Christ sees it. In essence, Christ is my life because I'm in him. Being in Christ means that I am finally in a place where I can live without fear because now I have covering. <laughs> I have safety and I feel secure, which means I just can't be moved. I just can't be attacked. You're not just going to run up on me and have your way because in order to get to me, you've got to go to Christ because I'm in Christ. Woo. I know that helps somebody in here. They just can't get to you. They got to go through Christ to get to you. I know they're giving you hell on the job. They got to go through Christ to get to you. Woo! Jesus. But now being in Christ also affects what I put out. Because now that I am safe and realize that I'm in a place of power and authority that responds to my faith, I'm not so quick to react or respond to foolishness around me. But I filter what I do and think to do through Christ and let him grab hold of my behavior and bring it under subjection and not let it leave me unless it looks just like him. I'm preaching. See, see, I like what God does through Christ. He takes us out the world and places us in Christ. But watch this. But we are in Christ, but in the world. We're in Christ in the world which means as Christ did in the world, so do we, because we are in Christ in the world. And, and the shout is that when I read my Bible, I recall all the stories of how Christ healed and how he delivered and how he resurrected and spoke to and conquered while in the world. And guess what? That lets me know that because I am in Christ and I am in the world, I too can heal and be healed. I can deliver and be delivered. I can speak and cause my environment to submit to the authority of God and walk the earth as a conqueror and not a coward. Oh, I can do all that because I'm in Christ in the world. He didn't leave me out by myself to fend for myself. I said that I'm in Christ, but I'm in the world. Being in Christ is more than just 
being identified with him, but being infused by him. Because it's what he gives us by his spirit that makes him that much more visible in us and through us. So as long as we stay planted and connected to him, we will see the fruit of God that is the visible proof that we are in Christ. Y'all all right with me this morning? Paul says you have been fitted into Christ, which means now your problem with the world is that you don't fit in. <laughs> That's the problem. You are fitted in Christ. So the problem is now that you don't fit in. You look like them on the outside, but you don't fit in. There was a time when you were a part of the mix and you were a piece of the puzzle. And now being placed in Christ means you look out of place in the world. And as a believer, we have to be all right with not fitting in. Christ died for us to be trendsetters and live counterculture. Anybody got Christ swag in here? Anybody got Christ swag? He died for us to be trendsetters and live countercultural to this world. Instead of following them to hell, we want them to follow us to heaven. Oh, that's Christ swag right there. Go get a t-shirt. And see, people are always, always looking for something to get into a group to get into or something because they just want to fit in. But I praise God that when you're in Christ, there's nothing else to look for because in him, you have everything that you need. Somebody shout, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Point two, point two. Not only are we in Christ, but you're a new creation. That's regeneration right there. We learned that in discipleship. Who, who? Okay, I got a few people in discipleship. All right, praise God. Enroll in the next class. You're a new creation. You're a new creation. So now God plants you in Christ and births a new creation, another species, but of a different bloodline. <laughs> this is important because just like Cain and Abel had the proclivities, that's Bishop Noel Jones' word, habits, and behaviors passed down from their earthly parents, Adam and Eve, which are also our progenitors, God has passed to us the habits, behaviors, life, and desires of our Heavenly Father. I say that we've been born again. And I don't know about you, but I needed to be reborn because I was messing up my first birth. I, I made decisions as if I had no authority over me. I was walking around like I ran the earth not considering who I hurt, not even considering if the decisions I made hurt myself. Y'all better be honest in here. I was intoxicated by sin, stumbling into both the known and the unknown and didn't have a care in this world. I said, I needed to be reborn. Maybe you was all right and you made all the right decisions and you didn't hurt nobody and you didn't hurt yourself, but I needed to be reborn because I was literally tearing some stuff up. But praise be to God that he cared for me when I didn't care about myself. And he didn't just sit in heaven, but he loved me enough to say, I've got to bust a move on his behalf. I've got to send Jesus to die for his sins. I've got to let him know that he needs to look no further because I am the way. I've got to dispel all the lies that he's ever known because I am the truth. I've got to give him hope beyond what he's living because I am the life. Jesus took a chance on me and with this new life, I've got to give him praise. I've got to give him glory. I've got to give an honor. Why? Because he gave me a new life in Christ Jesus. Whoa. But now the fact that we are new means that our goals and our pursuits are new. I'm getting touched right now. Our life as we know it is under a new authority which is God and no longer the devil, who has a plan and purpose. God has a plan and purpose that is unlike our plans and purpose when we lived lives without God and without hope. Ephesians 2 and 12 sums it up. It says, it helps us with this, and it says, remember that at the time you were separate from Christ, 
excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's not my words. That's 1 Peter 1 and 3. Now, this is important because the hope or insurance we have in God gives us direction. It's a blind direction that the eyes can't see, but the spirit is in agreement with, and it causes me to live a life of faith in which my motives, decisions, and actions are undergirded by the fact that I trust my God. I trust him when things look bad. I trust him when folks hurt me. I trust him when I get an urge for something that contradicts my walk. I trust him when I'm lacking in an area, whether it be physical, emotional, financial, or social, that I haven't seen consistency in for a while. I said I trust my God no matter what. Because I'm new and I've been reborn, there's an expectation that my character won't change because of what I don't have or see. But it will become stronger because of the God that I do have and the work that I do see him doing in my life. And the reason why I know what I see of his work is because I used to be a piece of work. But in the toughest times of my life, I see more of what I have become as opposed to what I became all those years without him. Ooh, I'm preaching. I praise God that he made me over, that he made me new, that he recreated me and has given me the life that I could only dream of. I've been reborn. But lastly here, lastly here says that the old has passed and the new has come or it's here. You're in Christ. You've been reborn. The old has passed. <laughs> the new has come. Now, this is the area that we really need to grab hold of. Because if you realize that the old you had really passed, then you'd stop trying to reach for it and make it a part of what God has recreated you to be said this is the part you got to grab hold of I got some guilty witnesses in the house the problem is that the old you has no life it lacks effectiveness and relevance to the new you and because you don't fit in with that anymore you actually have to put an effort into convincing yourself that the two lives can coexist at the same time time that wasted effort this leads to further issues because in Christ you now have the revelation of his will and you're saying that I have no excuse I know his will but I choose to still live with my old mindset my old behaviors and go in my old direction I said, you have the revelation, you know what's up, but you just make a choice and say, I choose to go back to my old stuff. I'm trying to deliver somebody in here. But do you realize that we waste effort on trying to rehash the old stuff rather than spending that effort into cultivating this new life we have in Christ? And because of it, we convince ourselves that maybe we really haven't changed at all. What's the message title? I've been changed. But see, the devil is a liar. Because if the Bible says that you are new, you are new. And it's not that God isn't working, but we aren't working with him. You, you've got to see anything of the former as a threat to your future. The, the new hasn't just come, but it's available to you. And God has released you from the old you so you wouldn't have to struggle with the new. I said God released you from the old you. See, you thought you were free. I said God had to release you from the old you. Even when you thought you were free, you had chains and you were bound. I said God had to release you from the old you. You weren't trying to come out on your own. God had to release you 
from the old you. And I thank God that he untied me when I didn't want to untie myself. I didn't say I couldn't untie myself. I didn't want to untie myself. I was entangled with all the craziness in the world. But I praise God that he released me from my old self so that I can walk into my new self in Christ Jesus. Woo! Woo! God knew you would try to hold on to bits and pieces. And he knew that the decision would be hard. I feel deliverance up in here. Good God. Somebody here needs a free their mind in the name of Jesus. Get this word right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to free their mind in the name of Jesus and allow this word to go in on good soil and cultivate some good fruit in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to free their mind and be delivered and set free by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know who that was for. God knew. God knew that you would try to hold on to bits and pieces, that the decisions would be hard. And that's why he had to make you an offer like the Godfather that you couldn't refuse. He had to make you an offer that you couldn't refuse. You've been changed. You have been changed. So you don't have to be what you used to be. But you're free to go as high in God, as far in God, and as deep in God as you want to. And no matter what direction you go, it's just God, 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 God. No matter where you find yourself, it's just God. You don't got to worry because you're in Christ. I'm here to help somebody understand that when you've been changed, that the new is here. It ain't coming along the way, but I'm trying to help somebody understand that when you've been changed, hallelujah, that the new is here. You are the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You have his peace. You have his joy. You have his character. You have his love. You have contentment in marriage. You have strength to go on. You have patience so you can stop wrecking in your life and you have the insurance that no matter what you are in Christ so ain't no devil in hell and ain't no human or earth can pluck you out of your position because you are in Christ and you have been changed glory to God yeah somebody ought to give God a praise somebody ought to give God a praise Hallelujah! You've been changed. No more chains. No more ropes. You're not bound in your mind. You're not bound in your person. You have been changed by the blood of Jesus. Yeah! Y'all can praise him. Woo! No more low living. God has set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Y'all better praise Him. Praise Him for your neighbor that's bound. Shout for your neighbor that's bound. Go ahead, just enter in. Intercede for somebody that needs it. You don't know who it is, but shout for them. Somebody got to get free. You are changed. You're not who you used to be. You are who God says that you are. Nothing less than what God says you are. Come on, y'all. I feel deliverance in this place. 
Shout for somebody else. I feel deliverance in this place. Yes! We need to praise him till something breaks. God got some people on his mind. Something's got to break. I feel it. Something's got to break. Come on, y'all. Just praise him just a little while longer. Something's got to break. I feel it. I feel the pressure. Something's got to break. Something's got to give. I feel it. Come on, y'all. Just a little while longer. Do it for somebody else if not for you. Something's got to break. Whoever it is, come out. You're already out. Stop going back in. The stone's been rolled away. Stop going back in dead places. Come on, something's got to break. I feel somebody's pressure. I feel somebody's conflictedness. You got two desires competing on the inside. You want to do God's will and the world's will at the same time. God says, I brought you out. Stay out. God says, you have been changed. You ain't looking for a change. God says, it's you have been changed. Don't worry about what the world continues to call you. You are who God says you are and nothing less. Even when you slip up, let me help you out. You still are who God says you are. Maybe you backslid for months. You still are whoever God says that you are. Come on and give him some praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give him some praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give him some praise this morning. He's worthy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I believe if you just slip up your hand, God, I surrender it all to you. God, I give it all to you. I've tried it my way, God, but God, I give it all to you right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise him until you get your breakthrough. Praise him until you get your deliverance. Hallelujah. 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 He's here just for you. He's here just for you. Reach out and get him. He's here just for you. Hallelujah. 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 Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. 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 Hmm, Jesus. Hmm, Jesus. Hmm, God, we call on you, God. God, no other help that we know, God. God, right now, God. Right now, God. Right now, God. God, come and see about us right now, God. Right now, God. Right now, God. Move, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, move right now in the name of Jesus. God, we need you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, we just thank you. God, we just thank you. God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. 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 If you're saying that I know that I've been changed, but you really don't understand that quite yet, and you just want somebody to combine their faith with your faith, if you need God to deliver you in an area that you just can't seem to get it together by yourself, but you just want to combine your faith with somebody else's, and you just need somebody to pray with you this morning, the altar is open for you. You've seen other people worshiping, and you've seen them praising, but you, you still haven't gotten there yet. I still can't seem to break through whatever it is that's holding you down, and you just want someone to pray with you. You want someone to intercede with you this morning. The altar is open for you. Or maybe you're just saying it's well with my soul. But I know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that I can intercede on the behalf of them. You've got it together, but you just want to pray with somebody else. You want to stand in the gap for somebody else. The altar is open for you this morning. God, I know I've been changed. But every now and then, God, sometimes I slip back a little bit, God. God, I know that you have a work for me. But every now and then the enemy comes and he takes me back a step. But you just want somebody to pray with you this morning. It's all right. It's all right. The altar is open for you. Hallelujah. 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 I've been coming to church Sunday after Sunday, week after week, month after month, and still can't seem to get that breakthrough. The altar is open for you. Just want to say, Savior, do not pass me by. While you're blessing others, Father, God, don't forget about me. In the name of Jesus, do it, God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we just bless your name. God, we bless your name, God. God, break every soul tie, God. In the name of Jesus. God, no matter what, God. God, we're just going to press our way through this morning, God. God, just pressing our way through to the deliverance this morning, God. God, you've got a work for us to do, Father. So right now, God, we're just going to press our way through, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you, God. Maybe you've heard the word being preached here, and you know that it's just the Spirit of the Lord that's in this place, and Maybe you're looking for a church home. You're not looking for a perfect church, but you're looking for a church where people love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because if it was a perfect church, I wouldn't be here. Amen. Amen. But maybe you're just looking for somewhere that you can just freely worship God in spirit and in truth. Maybe you're looking for somewhere where you know that the Holy Spirit resides in. The doors of the church are open. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thanks to God. Are we praying this morning that God is going to do exactly what he set out to do? Are you praying this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of God. Come on, saints of God. Are you praying this morning? It's not for a form or fashion, but are you praying this morning? Because, see, you can get the overflow. Hallelujah. 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 If not for yourself, but for somebody else this morning. Hallelujah. Don't you leave until you get what God came for. Don't you leave out these doors until what you came here for. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two, two. Let me see that one second. Two. Before we move on with this, uh, I'll take this off. Before we, you're fine. Before we move on with this uh, other part of the service, <clears throat> no, I'm fine. I'm going to call someone up. I want the brother back here. His name is Alvin. I want him to come up and just give a short testimony about how the word that God gave me for today. I'm sure it was for some of everybody, but I need you all to hear this testimony. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Have some, uh, God bless some you. Tea over on the um, some tea. I'm beside myself. Uh, I've never been to this church before. I live right across the street. Um, I, uh, <laughs> God is, has a special gift inside me. I do spiritual poetry. I recite spiritual poetry under the name Testimony, and I've been doing that for a while and travel and things of that nature. But uh, almost a year to the day, uh, I also was an addict. I relapsed because of situations that the pastor was talking about, pulled me back into the world, and um, as a result, I lost my job, my family was dissolved, uh, in a place of hopelessness, in a pit, uh, was homeless on the streets, and um, <laughs> a week ago today, um, God just removed the taste of crack from my mouth. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to stop, <laughs> you know. He said it was time to stop. And I came here because I knew I needed to hear a word from God. And through your pastor, God has shared with me that I've been changed and been delivered from that. And I don't have to go back no more, because I'm in Christ, but I'm in the world. But I'm not of the world. Come on now. Hallelujah. 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 It's just something that I couldn't do myself. God just did it for me. God did it. And he told Pastor to tell me that he did it. And that's what he did. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I just want to share that with y'all. But y'all have a real man of God here. Y'all have a real man of God. And you give God praise for the man of God of this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, bless the Lord. Come, Come on, bless on, praise the Lord. him. Come on and praise Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. He's still here to deliver. Hallelujah. He's still here to set free. Hallelujah. Come on. We don't need the music to do something. We want God to do what he's supposed to do. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. Bless the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I don't know about y'all, but see, I can just praise God all day long. Amen. 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 Because see, I know what God has done for me. Amen. Amen. I might not be on crack, but I've been on some other stuff. Come on, somebody. Preach. I done been laid up, tangled up, and tied up, but I thank God for delivering. Hold 